My name is Father Philip Smith of the Catholic parishes or churches of Grange, Oversands, Milnthorpe and Arnside in Cumbria. I'm giving a reflection on the readings for the 17th Sunday of the year, year A, 26th of July. I trust and hope that you've got before you a missal or, or the mass readings within the parish we have circulated them. It's always good to have a look at those readings and see what you get out because here are my reflections after prayer on the readings. And by the way, I do try them out on myself. If they don't mean anything to me, I hope um, I wouldn't give them to you. The Gospel continues with the parables of the Kingdom of Heaven. We had those last week of St Matthew's Gospel. The Kingdom of Heaven, of course, is not a particular place. It's any place where people strive to follow the rule of God, where God rules. Now, if the Kingdom is following the rule of God, uh, we need to know what is the rule of God? And at this point, we come into the need for wisdom. Wisdom is seeing our lives from God's point of view. And following that point of view with goodwill, of course. We should treasure such wisdom as, as we hear that King Solomon treasured the wisdom in the first reading. He, he was a young man, came to the throne after David in ancient Israel. And he realised that the most important thing he needed to rule well was wisdom. Now we should treasure wisdom looking at things from God's point of view. Wise people seek God because in following what is God's will, we find our own deepest purpose and contentment. If we go our own way, we tend to hurt others and ourselves. How often have I said to myself, I thought my idea was a good idea at the time, but a little bit later on, I found out it was very silly. So seeing things from God's perspective means you get a better grasp of what's really going on. It's like viewing the ground from above, higher up. Uh, the umpire at Wimbledon, for example, sits on a high chair. He sees more clearly what's happening in the tennis court. So seeing the world from God's point of view helps us get our lives right. We can alter our point of view. We see the big picture. At this point, I'm going to introduce a little aside about the third parable because I'm going to speak about the first two parables. We'll come to those in a moment. Third parable. That's the one about fishermen fishing all types of fish. But when they get to shore, they throw out the unsaleable ones that shouldn't be there and only keep the saleable ones for market. Uh, the fact is this. Many are nominally part of God's kingdom, but in actual fact, their lives contradict God's will. Now, they're given every chance, of course, to change. And I'm not judging people. I'm told not to by God. Even though they're not wholehearted followers of Christ, God wants to give everybody a chance that's the whole point of that um, 
parable. But in the end, if they persist in rejecting God's rule, then God will reject them. He's got to do so. They will be like the inedible fish that are thrown out by the fishermen. Now, that's just an aside. I want to focus, however, on the first two parables. Now, in both of those parables, people find treasure. The treasure in the field, hidden in the field, and the treasure that is the pearl of great price. And they both symbolise finding God's wisdom. The two people who find these treasures go away rejoicing. It really is so hugely important. It's valuable. It's life changing. The first thing these parables, these two parables do, is teach us a great lesson. They say God is present in our world. He's not something outside. The treasure in the field is found by the workman. On the field he's probably worked all his life. He stumbles upon it. So God's treasure is within our world. The pearl merchant finds the pearl of great price in the midst of his business. So the first thing God is saying is, you find the great treasure here and now. Finding God's wisdom then is life changing. The treasure, the farm worker and the pearl dealer sell up all they've got when they find the treasure. The one buys the field, the other sells all his other assets. In other words, it's so important and it's so exciting that it's worth everything else. The fact is this, finding God working in the world around us results in changed lives. We live our, we live our lives more contentedly with a new and more positive view of the lives. It changes in several ways. First of all, our own place where we live becomes of great interest. The treasure is found, remember, in familiar land, the land that the, work, the farm worker has farmed. And yet it becomes holy ground, the place where we meet God. My great nephew got a metal detector this altered his view of familiar walks that he made with his dad. He found things within the ground that he had never seen before. I don't think they were very valuable, mind, but they were great fun. Just so, we find touches of God and his goodness all around us when we look from God's point of view. We've never seen them before. We see, for example, a kind action to an elderly person by a young person in the street. We go away delighted at seeing the hand of God. Secondly, we realise that God is really our employer. The pearl merchant finds God in the centre of his job. That's very important. We begin to do our work for Jesus. We find deepening job satisfaction in our lives and in our jobs, however ordinary they might be. These are some of the great benefits. We begin to see goodness in the world more clearly. St Paul is quite hot on this. Um, he says, God turns everything to our good when we cooperate with him. We begin to do our um, 
count our blessings in a new way, have a more positive outlook on life. The goodness outweighs the bad things. And at that moment, the scriptures begin to speak personally to us. We find, as our Lord said right at the end, treasures in our household, our household of faith. From the Old and New Testaments, treasures old and new, he says. They speak to us clearly and reassure us that God is with us through those sacred words. And finally, we improve our taste. I'll explain what I mean. If we see things from God's point of view, with God's wisdom, we see goodness and truth and purity more clearly and prize it. Things that fascinated us formerly, like slightly dirty entertainments, diversions that were rather mean and low and petty. All of these begin to disgust us. Our tastes change. Our tastes have been re-educated. I believe that's what uh, organisations like Slimmer's World uh, try to do. They help people to see junk food as something nasty and unpleasant and develop a taste for healthy food. Just so we develop a taste for healthy spiritual living and a healthier view of life. Now the result of finding God's wisdom then is a, a great and positive change of view in our lives. We begin to see our great dignity as God's fellow workers and see the purpose and meaning in our lives. So at this moment, a little prayer with you and for you. Lord, I pray. Lord, help us to see our world anew. Let us see your hand at work in the splendour of creation and in the beauty of human life. May we see that touched by your hand, the world is holy. Help us to cherish the gifts you give us and share all these blessings with our brothers and sisters. Amen. And we pray, we just pray. We realise that you cooperate with all those who love you, dear Lord. I pray for all those listening tonight, to this afternoon. I pray that they may treasure the privilege of having your personal guidance and your laws. We remember also all the people and government of this country during the pandemic, that we will all act for the common good. Lord, come down upon all of us with our separate needs. In your wisdom, guide us and help us to be open to that wisdom. Lord Jesus, wisdom of God, the unfolding of your word gives light to our lives. We thank you. Amen.